So the good news is I finished the bottom of the coiled basket. The bad news is I am not quite ready to do the sides because I changed my mind. And I changed my mind for a good reason. So this has been done, as you might remember from the video I posted yesterday, by taking strips of fabric that are about a half an inch wide and I just kind of been twisting them and coiling them around there and then stitching the coils. And it made a beautiful basket. I'm very happy with it. I had been a little frustrated with the center when I started, but you know, this is the bottom. It looks great. This is what you'll see on the inside of the basket. But the reason I changed my mind is it became kind of fiddly to do this twist. And it would have been fiddly if I was doing it over rope. And the other reason I stopped at this is because it dawned on me, because it's the first time I've done one this large, that perhaps I can't go as large as I want to with this because the sides might be too weighty and the bottom might not be heavy enough to support it. So I don't know. I might have to do something to the bottom once I get it as large as it's going to go and it's going to go as large as I have material for. That's all there is. So here's my decision. I decided to save a side four chunks of this fabric to maybe mess with something else. I have got some knotted strands of fabric <clears throat> that, that blend with this that I'm going to use somehow. And then what I was going to do was take the strips of fabric like this and do the same thing, twist as I was coming up the sides. But I decided instead that what I wanted was to have cordage. So I need to translate all these strips of fabric into cordage, which is going to take time. So I thought I would give you a reminder on how I'm doing cordage. I've got a video on doing it with threads. This one will show you how I'm starting it and doing it with just fabric. And you can do it in any size. The pieces that I'm using here are about the same. They're about a half an inch to an inch. They vary. And the other reason I decided to do it is this fabric is kind of a, a shiny, slippery, polyester, nylon, something. And it was going to be even more fiddly than working with the cotton. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the cordage, which will probably going to take me another day and a half, maybe two days to get that done. So I wanted to at least pop in here and show you that I hadn't given up on the project. To start cordage, it's just a twist. And you're going to be twisting in opposite directions. I tend to hold one side and then just twist my other side. And normally you'd have a larger piece, but since I've already started, I just want to show you how I started it and then how I continue. And you just keep twisting it until it starts to fold in on itself. Okay, you can see it's going to start to twist. And I just keep going until, so there we go, we got my little loop starting here. All right, and I've got my little loop there, and that's what I'm going to hold on to. I'm going to hold on to that loop, and now I've got my two strands of fabric. I'm going to take the top one, so we've got the top strand, the bottom strand. Kind of wet my fingers, or you can also have a paper towel that's slightly damp. I'm going to twist the top one away from me, and then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to tuck this bottom one behind. So now the bottom one is on top. I'm going to twist it away and tuck underneath. Twist away and tuck underneath. And that is all there is to making cordage. You can get so fast at this that you can keep doing this while you're not even watching it. You can do this while you're driving in the car, watching TV, what have you. Now, this is the piece I've been working on. And it just sort of gradually evolves but I wanted to go for a ways on this so I could show you how I join the fabric. Now you can make cordage out of threads, which I had posted a link to that on the video yesterday. I'll post that again today. You can post make cordage out of threads, which is how I made this vessel. And cordage out of threads ends up like this. You can make it out of fabric. You can make it out of a uh, sari ribbon, a uh, regular ribbon, you can make it out of plant materials. That's, you know, whatever you want. If you can twist it and hold on to it like this, if you're working with plant materials, there's another couple of little tricks to it, like you have to soften the fibers and what have you. But for fabric, this is 
I don't know, this is just very relaxing to me to do something like this. Like I said, you can get to where you're not having to pay any attention to what you're doing until you come to the join. And it's a nice way, you know, if you want to experiment with it, I suggest taking some old sheets and just ripping them. Don't worry about cutting them straight. This dark blue fabric is various uh, widths because it didn't want to tear straight. It wasn't all cotton. Um, I don't even think there was any cotton in it. And that's okay. It means that my cordage is going to be varying widths, but I'm okay with that because it's going to give more of a unique feel to the coils as I'm stitching them on. And I know having the coils is going to make it a lot easier, a lot faster to raise the sides up. So I just want to get all the coils done mostly off camera, or um, not the coils, the cordage done off camera. All right, so... When you get to your join, and it's very simple, and this becomes really, really strong. Now you could do cordage like this, and then you could decide to do it again and make it even thicker, but this will be fine for what I want to do. You could cut your strips of fabric wider, and that will give you even, you know, thicker cordage. You could, as you're doing this, you could uh, twine uh, individual threads of a different color in here. You could do roving in here. Okay, I've got a little bit here. Now I'm going to take my next piece that I want to add, and I'm just going to lay it right over the top here, just like that. And I'm going to twist it. And I'm just going to hold on to both of them. Sometimes it's going to slide out. Just start over again. It's not it's not anything to be really stressed about, and I'm going to show you the little lumpy bit when I get done. Again, my way of creating pretty much anything is not to worry about trying to get something perfect. I want to make it organic to the materials I'm working with and organic to me. All right, so now I'm going to have a little flap that's sticking out. You can come back in there and cut this. You could be very careful when you're making your join and tuck it all in. I'm not going to worry about it because again, as I'm coiling this around here, a lot of this is going to get hidden in the stitches. So I'm not going to worry about it for this type of thing for cordage. So that's where I am now on this basket. I am going to turn all of this into a big ball of cordage and then I will start doing the same thing that I did on the bottom. I'm going to start going around and then I've left some of this aside and I haven't decided yet I could make cordage out of this to mix in with it. I could use it with my knots and I could just twist it around the knots as I'm doing it. I could make a, another strand of knots out of this color to mix with these knots. Um, I don't know, right now I'm leaning towards making cordage with it, but I might make some with knots. I don't know, let me know what you think. That's where I'm at. I will be back when I have a big ball of cordage so I can start doing the sides.